Hello friends, this video on food production enhancement part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So that is where came the concept of outbreeding. So let us see what is outbreeding. So as I said, unrelated superior males and females are mated. Now when we say unrelated, this is a very uh, broad term or a very general term. Now this unrelated could mean that the two animals belong to the same breed but they do not share any common ancestor. That means they, they are no way related genetically to each other but they belong to the same breed. This could also mean that the two animals belong to two different breeds altogether. So that is that is also one way by which they could be unrelated. <coughs> this could even mean that the two animals belong to two different species altogether. So then also they are unrelated. Now depending on how the animals are unrelated to each other, there are three types of outbreeding. So what are those three types? Outcrossing where we say that animals belong to the same breed but they do not share any common ancestor. So here also they belong to the same breed but no common ancestor. So that is how they are unrelated. So this is known as outcrossing. Out because it is not within the uh, same ancestral background. So it is outcrossing. This for example, here, if you see, these two dogs, they belong to the same breed, but they do not share the same ancestor. So that is why the similarities between two dogs, which will have same ancestors, will be more when compared to the similarities between two dogs, which do not share any common ancestor. So it is as simple as this. Let us suppose you compare yourself with your sibling. So the similarities will be more, but when you compare yourself with your friend, the similarities are less. The next type is crossbreeding. So what is crossbreeding? This would mean that animals with different breeds are mated. So the two individuals, that is the male and the female, they belong to two different breeds altogether. So that is crossbreeding. So they are two different breeds. So they are even more less related. So here if you see this dog and this dog, they different to, they belong to two different breeds. And the third type is interspecific hybridization. Interspecific. Specific has been derived from the word species. So that means this is hybridization, that is formation of a hybrid interspecies between two species. So animals with different species are mated. So animals belonging to two different species, they are mated. So these are the three types of outbreeding. So as you can see here, let us suppose if this is a dog and this is a fox, so they both belong to two different species. Now one question that might arise in your mind that while defining species, we said that species are those group of organisms which can reproduce or mate amongst themselves. Now if, we, if that is how we define species, then how can we say that animals belonging to two different species are mated because they will not be able to reproduce. Now sometimes they can. Now if two animals, even though they belong to two different species, but if they share more similarities and if they belong to the same genus, then sometimes with some of the animals, they can reproduce amongst themselves. For example, donkey and horse. Or if you consider zebra or and donkey. So they belong to different species, but they share they belong to the same genus and they also share a lot of similar characteristics. So that is why they can mate amongst themselves. So that is how that, that is uh, why some of the animals, even though they belong to different species, but since they share a lot of similarities and they belong to the same genus, so they are able to reproduce with each other, and this is called interspecific hybridization. Now let us talk about each of this type of outbreeding. So first we'll talk about outcrossing. As I said, here unrelated superior males and females of the same breed are mated. Now you can see that as we move ahead, like inbreeding was animals which are related 
and belonging to the same breed. Then outcrossing where the animals are unrelated but still they are belonging to the same breed. Then we'll talk about crossbreeding where they will belong to different breeds. Then we will talk about interspecific where they'll belong to two different species. So you see as we go we actually see that the animals become the male and the female becomes more unrelated. So here they do not, they share no common ancestor for the last few generations as I say and that is what we mean by unrelated. But when we talk about inbreeding there, they shared a common ancestor in the last five to six generations. So here if you look at these two dogs, they belong to the same breed but they have quite a few differences. For example, if you look at the ears, so that this dog, the second dog has a long, has longer ears than the first one. Also, if you look at the type of face, so the second one has a longer face than the first one. So that means there will be my small, small differences between the two, even though they belong to the same breed because they do not share common ancestors. Now, breeding will ensure that more dogs with new traits will be produced with the desirable traits rather so like why do we breed this dog with this dog because let us suppose we want a dog which should have all the features like this first dog except for the ears we want the ears to be like this dog so when we mate it with this dog there are chances that the new dog that will be produced might have ears like the second dog and other features like the first dog so breeding would ensure that more dogs with desirable traits might be produced. So this helps to overcome the inbreeding depression. Because as I said, in, in inbreeding depression what happens is the productivity and the fertility both reduces. So it overcomes inbreeding depression. So that is the advantage of outcrossing. The next one is crossbreeding. So in this superior males and females of different breeds are mated. So the male and the female they belong to two different breeds together. But again please make sure that for any type of breeding the male and the female should be of superior quality. So let us take this example. Now in dogs we have hundreds of uh, breeds of dogs available. So here you can see the, there is one breed called Poodle, there is another, breed, uh, another breed called Schnauzer. Right? So now when Poodle and Schnauzer are mated, what happens? A new breed is formed which is called Snoodle. So this Snoodle will have some traits which are similar to Poodle and some traits which are similar to Schnauzer. And this is how new breeds are formed. So this new breed which is formed, that is the Snoodle, will have the desirable traits. And this is known as the process of artificial breeding. And this is how the desirable characters are formed or the desirable characters are retained. So this is what happens in crossbreeding. So here you can see that this belongs to a breed called Poodle. This dog belongs to a breed called Snozer. So they both belong to different breeds. But when they are mated, now they belong to the same species so they can mate when they are mated. So some of the traits of Poodle gets comes to Snoodle. Some of the traits of Snozer comes to Snoodle. And that is how this new breed called Snoodle is formed. So here new superior breeds are formed. So mostly what happens is the crossbreeding is uh, done considering the desirable traits or considering the traits which we want. So therefore the breed, the new breed which will be formed, it will have all the desirable traits or it will have all the better traits. So we can say that superior new breeds are developed. Now the next type that is interspecific hybridization. So in this superior males and females of different species are mated. So here in the picture you can see the example of horse and donkey. So as you can see they both belong to two different species. Now as I said, now you might ask that when horse is a different species altogether, So this kind of hybridization or this kind of mating is possible only if the two animals which belong to the, even though they belong to the different species, but still they share some similarities or at least they belong to the same genus. For example, here you can see horse, donkey or even zebra. They all belong to the same genus and they also share some of the similarities. So if you look at a horse and if you compare it with a donkey and on the other hand, if you compare the horse with a lion, 
with whom do you think it share more similarities of course it shares more similarities with a donkey so similarly if you compare a lion and a tiger so they share more similarities than a similarity shared between a horse and a lion right so that means if the two organisms share a lot of similarities and also if they belong to the same genus then there are possibilities that the organisms belonging to two different species can reproduce amongst themselves now here i would give you an example here i would give you an example where we see that the female horse when a female horse so if this horse is female so if the female horse is mated with a male donkey so what happens what do we get we get a mule so mule is a hybrid between the do horse and the donkey now similarly if i say that instead of a female horse if i take a male horse and if i cross it with a female donkey in that case will i get a mule again not exactly that's because again now since you are changing the male and the female so the traits which are going to come in the offspring that will also change to some extent some extent so you will not get an organism which will exactly be identical to mule but you will get a slightly different organism and that is given a different name called hinny so hinny is the animal which is formed by the fusion by the mating of female donkey and male horse whereas male uh, whereas mule is that animal which is formed by interspecific hybridization between the female horse and the male donkey so this is how we can see that interspecific hybridization can take place and all these animals like horse donkey zebra they all belong to the same genus and what is that genus they all belong to equals genus that is why it is also possible to perform interspecific hybridization between zebra and donkey and that is where you get zonkey so that means interspecific hybridization is possible between these animals thank you please visit examfear.com for an easy four step learning process absolutely free of cost watch video lessons ask questions refer notes and take an online test thank you once again